in disbelief, shock. No one can understand how this happened. Chris was a rising star. He was having the time of his life over in the United States. We've all heard about gun violence in America, but this has really brought it home to us here right across the country. Parents in Australia who may have children on scholarships in the US, also the students themselves, just utter disbelief that this could happen to, to one of ours. Now, this is the front page of the local newspaper here in Melbourne today, the Herald Sun newspaper. You can see the three accused who are on the front page there. It says, the teens American police shot, say, shot our star. Now, our political leaders have described it as senseless. It's been the reaction from the family as well as reporting from that baseball club in the suburb of Essendon. It's just north of Melbourne here. Family, friends, as well as teammates and people from the local baseball club have all been down there this week. It's been terribly sad. They've been placing a baseball with tributes written on it, flowers on the home base there. His mother and father, they held back tears. They described Chris as just another normal kid. He loved his baseball. He's loved the game since he was 15 years old. And he loved it because he always wanted to go to college in the US, peers, and he saw that this was his chance. It's an absolutely appalling story. I want to bring in now Tim Fisher. He served as Deputy Prime Minister in the John Howard government from 1996 to 1999. The significance of that being that after a appalling massacre in Port Arthur in Australia in 1996, uh, huge changes were made to gun control in Australia. Uh, and as a result, they've had hardly a mass shooting since, and certainly nothing of this random nature. Tim Fisher, you've called for a boycott of America by Australian tourists showing the depth of your feeling. What is your reaction to what has happened here? Just for the record, Australia has had zero gun massacres since 1996, and the United States, 80 people killed by guns every single day. So it is another example of murder mayhem on Main Street. Yes, uh, people thinking of going to the USA on business or tourist trips should think carefully about it, given the statistical fact you are 15 times more likely to be shot dead in the USA than in Australia per capita per million people. I've had this debate countless times on this show in the last two years, and I keep being assured by the gun rights people that the only way to deal with gun violence is for more people to be armed and more guns to be in circulation. Obviously, Australia went a completely different direction and took away guns. There was a huge amnesty and a ban on many semi-automatic and automatic uh, weapons. Tell me what you think of the logic that more guns means less gun crime. Well, you've done well over there. You've got 250 million guns in the US of A. You have semi-automatics and automatics in the suburbs. We don't in Australia. And we still have freedom and the sporting shooters to have right to have guns, farmers have the right to have guns, anyone with licensing has the right. But we don't have gun shows where you can rock up and not even be subject to a background check in one of the most dumbest decisions uh, so far in the litany of agony over the gun laws and gun policies of the NRA and the USA. Uh, there is deep-seated anger this time. I can tell you uh, there is disbelief, uh, a fine young Australian cut down by three bored teenagers, allegedly. Uh, and uh, uh, I just want to say that uh, I would appeal to uh, the deep thinkers in the USA to think again about the drift in the state of the nation. I went to Philadelphia to the Constitutional Convention uh, Constitutional Museum to look particularly at aspects of the Second Amendment. Uh, it, the Second Amendment does not provide for semi-automatics in the suburbs of Main Street.